Hey there, this is uh, Isaac from uh, Church of the Rock. Hey, and um, I've called for a few times on this, but I want an updated price on um, a mixing board and the digital snake that goes with it. Um, so the uh, Yamaha CL5 and then the Rio 3224. No, no, I haven't ordered it. I've just called for a quote a few times to see how the prices are changing. So. Uh, CL5 mixing board. In 2004, I put my faith in Christ. I took a little recording class in 2005. And then in 2006, roughly, I began serving in audio at Church of the Rock in Winnipeg in Canada. I volunteered for seven years and then I've been on staff now for about eight, kind of close, roughly. And almost that entire time we've been using this Yamaha M7 CL mixing board. We got it almost in the first couple of think, months of me, me starting to serve. And it served us faithfully. It's only had one fader every die. But this is the week where we're going to replace it. We're going to replace it with the Yamaha CL5. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the entire process of budgeting, ordering, um, installation, which is going to be quite uh, a detailed setup and then showing you running the very first service using Yamaha CL5. So my tech director, Chuck, and I have been thinking about it for a while, and we couldn't actually nail down exactly how long we've had the M7 CL, but thinking it was probably 13 or uh, 14 years, and uh, we knew for the last while it's going to need replacing. We had one fader die, but it's just... Uh, you know, anything that old eventually is going to die. I know Yamaha boards are rock solid and ours has been, been rock solid, but it was, we had the realization if that it died, our whole audio to everything that we do dies. So that'll be our broadcast mix, which goes to our on-demand, our multi-site, our online campus, to our archive, to the TVs in the hallway. It was a bit weird considering replacing a board that was overall working really well and we knew it was going to be a really big budget hit. But it was just the thought that if this thing goes, everything goes, so it had to get done. So when we were thinking about upgrading, our obvious choice was the Yamaha CL5 because we have this M7 CL and that's the natural next generation. We have other Yamaha boards in our building all over the place, our volunteers are all trained on it. And so that was the obvious choice, but we still wanted to do our due diligence and do our research. And uh, we did a bunch of researching, of course, online, watching videos. But the church actually even uh, was generous enough to send us to WFX to first of all learn other things but also to look at a bunch of mixing boards and get our hands on them. And so we looked at a bunch of boards, a bunch of boards we for sure knew we couldn't afford. And the main competition for the CL5 was going to be the Allen & Heath D-Live boards and it actually came really close but in the end we decided to go with the Yamaha CL5. It just seemed like the right choice for us in our environment. I didn't put in a budget request in 2018 for the 2019 year because we'd just done this major building renovation. But then at the end of 2019, when budget time came up, I'm like, you know, I think we really have to go for this. So, you know, Chuck and I had a long conversation and the mixing board was um, a certain price and it was still a big number, but at least I thought I could do the request, put it in and uh, we actually submitted the budget. It actually went through, it was approved. I'm just getting prices on a actually mixing board and a digital snake. In early 2020, this is only a few months later, the price of the mixing board had skyrocketed up more than 20%. So with the price being that much higher, I was told I was going to have to wait until we found some kind of sale or something. But I thought I'd still at least get quotes. So I got a few people to give me some quotes from a few local companies. Okay, so I got... Um quote from and actually it was my friend jesse at matrix video who i took a recording class with who was able to get us a good deal so we were able to order the mixing board and get it shipped enough, to us should be all right i'll take it from here guys thank you so much you good now? big day for us yeah so. thank you. all right take care see you
first thing we see, of course, we got the, uh, the manual, which I will actually study. Put that to the side. Then we have the snake itself. That is rather quite heavy. There we go. Dante 3224 D2. Really nice. Very sweet. I'm gonna install that later this week. Now the moment we've been waiting for. Here we go. It's a nice big extra protective piece of cardboard on the top. That'll be nice for like a craft project or something. <laughs> Excessive tape, which is always appreciated. You know something's good when it's got an incredibly massive box. All right. Ooh, fancy. Oh, sweet. Comes with the uh, new Nintendo Live 2, the new version. That'll be really nice. Definitely be getting that installed. So the requisite power cable, and then nice little uh, cover. That's great. Happy they included that. I'll take out this piece of cardboard. Oh, it's kind of one big interlocking unit. Nice. There we go. Let's put that back in for you. And then we have the board itself. Oh yeah, that's nice. It's beautiful. That's really nice, let me spin that around for you guys. There we go. That really is a really nice machine. It's got 34 faders, it's got the full meter bridge. Lots of features which we'll cover a lot later in detail. Let me get someone to uh, help me lift this out of here, see if there's anything else. Probably not. And now I get the incredible pleasure of removing the film. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> okay. That sounded sexualizing. <laughs> <laughs> it was a bit much, wasn't it? <laughs> well, you know. And looks like we have them on the network here. CL5, bada bing, bada boom, and the reel. So they're on our Dante network. We are good to go. So my original plan was to take one week or however much time actually I needed and, you know, leave the mixing board on a cart put it beside the old mixing board, do all the programming, so all the channel selection and Dante routing and all of the starting point scenes and EQ and compression and get that all ready to go in kind of one week and then take uh, the next week and then do all of the hardware stuff like moving the mixing board over, running cables, moving the wireless over. So I installed this card that we had already purchased in the past and weren't using to give us eight more line ins and eight more line outs. I updated the firmware. I just started uh, picking out my channel layout, which has a lot more implications than one might first think. Then it dawned on us the way our schedule was, well, supposed to have been before this COVID thing broke out, that there wasn't gonna be enough time, so I had to do both in one week. 
So we made a plan to get all hands on deck with all of our tech staff, which includes my tech director, Chuck, uh, Vijoy and Ade, who are two um, guys who work in our team, even uh, called in my buddy, Chad. So here, um, so it's on, we're on Snake A. Okay. And... Sub-Snake A, Yeah, Sub-Snake A. Okay. And... Hmm, how do I want to do this? So on March 10th, 2020, the only advice from the government was to make sure to, you know, wash your hands, try not to hug people too much, and that was about it. But everything was, even on that day, considering to proceed as normal. Little did we know how quickly that would all change. So to move the wireless over and to use our snakes as sub-snakes, we had to take everything out of these two conduits that go from our front of house uh, under our stage that goes to our uh, rack room. And so it's quite a terrible job. We had to pull everything out and even de-end a bunch of it and re-solder it later. But in the end, it was all well worth it, but it was, yeah, quite a bit of work. And no project is complete until there's been at least some degree of soldering involved. All right, big moment. Addy and I are going to swap the boards out and drop the CL5 in. So we're going to take this and just put it on the ground, I think, over there for now. Okay. So grab back here. Yep. It's fairly heavy. Watch yourself. Oh, batteries, pens. Let's put it maybe it's back for a little bit. <laughs> Assortment of pens, batteries, other things. Here we go. Nasty. Back. Ding, ding, ding. Oh, hang on. Let's just take that out. Let's try that again. Sweet. So much room. Yeah, so we'll have to probably reconfigure this a bit. Nice. Oh, oh like it was meant to be there. <laughs> probably move it a bit over this way and move this a bit over, I think. Sweet. I'll leave it covered for now. It's nice, eh? So, back in the rack room, we realized we had to move over a bunch of our uh, copper snakes and want to incorporate them into our digital snakes. So I'm gonna have to crawl under the stage to feed stuff down that hole and to, from the other side. So I've got the headlamp on, got the knee pads on, the gloves. Let's go under the creepy underneath of the stage. It was later on this day that everything changed regarding this whole COVID-19 thing. It all of a sudden went from being just washing your hands to now recommended that groups over 50 shouldn't meet. It wasn't actually enforced yet. And so our pastors deliberated and considered all the option, weighed all the, the things and decided to have that weekend service. And, uh, but that was all decided on, on that day, that Thursday, while we're in the middle of all this. So on this job, we decided to actually label everything up right away while we're doing it. So many times we've done projects where we think, okay, let's just get the project done. We'll label it up later when we have time. And there's never a time when you have time. And some, some stuff has stayed unlabeled for years. And so we decided, let's just do it properly right off the bat, get it done. We got these uh, snazzy Epson printers where you can do all this fancy sizing and stuff. So may as well use them, may as well get it done. So with all the uh, hardware stuff done, it was time to get the programming post haste. There's a lot that has to be considered when doing this programming and channel layout. It has to go to our broadcast mix, it has to go to our personal monitors on stage. It has to be something that can be used by both myself and by a whole volunteer team. And so it has to be thoughtful about how everything is laid out. Then you need to, of course, save your scenes, save your books. There's actually a lot more that I'm just not describing here, but it's quite an involved process. Well, I've run into my first kind of real problem. Actually, everything has gone actually totally swimmingly till this point, um, even though it's still taking a long time. But I, as soon as I plugged in my Rio and everything else, I had this all kinds of super glitchiness on my Dante network. And I've had this before, so it dawned on me there's likely something where something is set to daisy chain instead of redundant. So what that means is 
it's expecting like one snake just to plug into the next snake instead of all going individually to a router and uh, having two separate networks. So it's just basically having a basic a feedback loop. So I realize that's happening and that's actually happening from the Rio, but now I gotta figure out how to get into those menus in the Rio. I've got the manual on my laptop, but it doesn't actually tell me exactly what I'm trying to do. So let me see if I can figure it out. There we go, sweet. So, unit ID Y001, let's leave it that way. Fresh daisy chain. There, redundant. Fan speed may as well be high. There you go. Good. There we go. So I am finally ready to do my uh, Dante patching through the Dante controller. If you haven't used it before, it's something, uh, it's really interesting way to work. It's kind of a matrix, you can select all your different channels. So you'll see me just um, moving things from one place to the other, kind of selecting from the snake to the board and vice versa and to upstairs. So this is a pretty complicated setup. So um, I'm just gonna run through that. Well, I've had a long day of programming and I'm still going strong, but I'm starting to blow bubbles a bit. But anyway, with all my changes to the front of house and even just relaying out a few channels, changing my uh, uh, Dante patching, I realize I have uh, significant changes I need to make to my uh, broadcast mix uh, room as well. This is where we do the live um, to online, live to multi-site. This is where all the audio goes to outside of our building. It's a separate mix. And uh, we've been using Dante already for that, but now we're getting to use it in a more advanced way with the new board downstairs and with the Rio and the gain compensation and all that. So I've got a fair bit of setup on this side, but I will do that now. So it's midnight and I think I've got it actually all done except for just the basic uh, testing which could cause some problems too but you know sometimes you have these long days for the kingdom but you know we are serving the Lord we're not just serving man we're not just doing things because it's a job or whatever we're doing things because it advances God's kingdom because people get saved because people get discipled into into the kingdom of God and sometimes it calls a person to go above and beyond, to work longer, and to push themselves harder. But it's so much worth it, and it's not anything that you would do with your own strength, but only with the strength of the Holy Spirit. And even now, I just really feel just empowered by the Holy Spirit. I'm amazed by how little I had of mistakes or things that went wrong. Uh, everything's been basically perfectly smooth. Even at the end of the night, it's been a long long day. I'm still being able to keep on top of a lot of details, like all kinds of routing and okay, this sends to this thing and this sends to that thing. So I just really want to emphasize that you can do things with Christ that you can't do through anybody else and it's so well worth it and he's such a good king and he's so faithful. So last night got uh, all the Dante networking set up, did a bunch of patching, re-labeled and re-listed the entire broadcast mix board whole bunch of stuff and uh, I think it's actually all working and all ready to go so today's the actual next morning and actually going to test it all. I have my friend Chad and my beautiful wife with me helping me to do some of this testing this morning and we're just going to make it all happen. So first of all I'm going to make sure all my lines are good, the gains are good, those kind of things and we'll go from there. Alright, so first thing I want to check is if there's actually talk back which actually is not set up yet so. Yeah, and you'll have to be uh, patient Chad, it's going to take a while. Sweet. All right, yeah, if you could um, play some synth for me, love. You're playing? Okay. Oh, up to the beginning there. 
Okay, I've got nothing. Go oh, wait. No, I got nothing. You know what? I didn't plug it in. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, synthesizer, please, my love. There we go. I think it seems to need more gain. And then this was the beginning of having to obsessively wipe down everything after each use. And so that's become a regular habit since that week. Every time I put on my tag, I feel like I'm taking on kind of a, a sacred duty for the Lord, but it seemed to have a special weightiness this week. I think I sound checking this way, so. So so lots this was our last wow, look at that level. service where right, we so actually had a full again. team of volunteers <laughs> in a, yeah, a congregation. The, um, hat, yeah, guys, Clearly we didn't quite get the social distancing yet, that was only two days in. This was the one and so far only weekend this board has actually been heard live by a group of people. It sounded, in my opinion, really good. A noticeable improvement in the, the clarity and also noticeable improvement in the, the low end and the body. It was just really fun to work on. A couple of the workflow things were actually different for me, so it was actually hard at first to adjust to it. I love helping people use their gifts and their interests to serve the Lord. This is Sam. I let him do some of the rehearsals so we could get a feel for this mixing board, get a feel for how it sounds and how it operates. He did a great job. Yeah. Can we keep some of that hardware at home? <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Like, uh, some people, actually, some, some companies will. They'll have, like, a full... Year. That's always nice getting uh, to know these these people who are just dedicated to the Lord, want to serve in tech. And we always pray before every service. Without the Lord, we just can't do any of this, and it's all for nothing without Him. Well, Dad, we love you. And, um, yeah, despite any of this stuff going on, Lord God, that we can just um, honor you and worship you. I pray that we can be a place of peace and of joy and of safety, that we can present strength, Lord God, to the world. I pray you just get rid of any fear, any people already in the congregation, that your, your power can come through it. I pray tonight's worship can be just worship to you, and that the message can be, go powerfully out. And uh, Lord, help us just to be wise in how we deal with this, and that we can even find new opportunities to minister your gospel, Lord. I pray you bless the tech, that it can run well, with the new mixing board and everything, and that uh, we can um, yeah, have none of that be a distraction, Lord, yeah, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Help the service go well. In Jesus' name. Love you, Lord. And the batteries are all good. Were they all the mics on? Yeah. Oh, okay, thank you, Jonathan. Ah, sweet. Good. And then I had the privilege of mixing the, the first service on this board. Oh, okay. Good evening, everybody. Where's my music? How are you doing? This is our right? Saturday service. It's always uh, less attended than our, our Sunday ones, but it's still a powerful experience. A lot of people did stay away because it was the first weekend with the COVID thing. And it sounded a lot better than it seems right now. That's just the audio coming from my little cheap lavalier mic. And you could smell the pot. It was coming out of their garage, right into our yard. And my kid said, what's that funny smell? I said, I'll tell you what that smell is. That's the smell of a federal government cabinet meeting. That's what that's. <laughs> <laughs> I've always been a smart <laughs> The Sunday service went really well. And then the following Saturday, I did a training session to train the people who serve in audio on the mixing board. And only about half of them showed up. But by then, you could tell we really figured out our social distancing. So before anyone else asks, the M7CL is going to be used in another room at the church. And that brings me to another point, is that not everybody can do an upgrade like this, and some people might feel bad about that. But my thought to those people is just, just master whatever mixing board you do have. If it's smaller or simpler or older, uh, just get really good at it. Learn every function of it. Learn how to get an excellent mix out of whatever mixing board you have. And that'll really go a long way, and it'll just develop your skill.
Uh, we have a need for, for more complex system because we have a nationwide broadcast. We have multi-site uh, online church, on-demand things. We need backup. So there's a much higher need here. Not everybody needs a board this complex. But it is really great to be able to upgrade. It's really nice to work with new tools and be able to have new functionality and things that work smoothly and well. I love the whole Dante network and how it's all integrated with this board. So it's been a true blessing and it's so great to upgrade. And I uh, just thank the Lord that we were able to do this. So that was supposed to be the end of the video, but didn't feel right ending it there in this time. You know, if we had known this crisis was going to break out, I don't think we would have bought the board. I think we would have waited. But it's really been good having it though. We've had to go and start shooting everything all over our building to get different content for different ministries, Kids Rock and for women and for just the different things we want to put out online. We've been able to set up mics here, here, here and here and mix them up here. And that's been really great being able to hear everything well. You can right away do EQ and compression and really dial your mixes in to go onto a recording. It's actually made our whole system way more effective and more functional. And I know God is using this time. As hard as it is, as much of an adjustment as it is, I won't lie, it's actually been uh, fairly tough to be um, in this situation and being able to put out all the content we want to put out and the time frames and there's a fair bit of pressure. But yet it's really been, at the same time, rather enjoyable being able to be a part of something you know is historic and life-changing and I know God's going to use that so if you are in that situation I want to encourage you as well God is doing something he is moving and he's using you so keep going keep doing it well it was a real privilege being able to budget for and then order and then receive and then unbox and then set up and then program our new Yamaha CL5 little did I know in the middle of setting it all up this whole COVID-19 thing was going to break out it made an intense week even that much more intense. But God enabled us to get it all done. And I so appreciate the crew of people who helped out with this. I really look forward to seeing how much worship and how much of the gospel is going to run through this mixing board in all the years it's going to be around. 